Hey there, Matt Walsh here, and today we're going to talk quickly about probate, specifically probate and real estate, because, well, this is a real estate channel. Okay, so what is probate? People don't really understand what probate is, and probate is, very simply put, the judicial process for determining where property should go after the owner dies, right? And most of the time, probate can be avoided with proper planning with wills or trusts, but that doesn't happen very often, okay? So probate addresses two major issues, right? Number one, you die with a will, but the will isn't isn't verified, it wasn't witnessed. There's, you know, maybe some problems with the will. So probate will verify the will and basically go through and try to make sure that um, what the decedent, you know, with the person who just recently died, what the decedent wants done with their property and then follow the instructions of the will or the other time that probate comes into play is uh when someone dies intestate which means without a will so now you die someone dies and there's no will there's no direction from the decedent as to what to do with the property so now the probate process has to come into play and determine who the rightful heirs are to the property. And that process can take a very long time. And it's also not cheap. Probate attorneys are not cheap. So that money has to come out of the, uh, the value of the estate. But the process basically is to take the property and determine who rightfully should possess it now that the owner has died. So what happens to real estate when someone dies, when the owner dies, okay? And that's basically determined by, you know, two things, all right? Did the person die with a will or did the person die without a will, okay? If someone dies without a will, without specific direction as to what to do with the real estate, then title to the property transfers to the heirs, okay? A list of heirs will have to be provided to the court all right, identifying family members who would be entitled to inherit um, the property. The list must include what the names and the address and all the contact information related to the heirs of the deceased. All right, a court administrator will be assigned to oversee this process um, and they will determine who the proper heirs are and then distribute the estate and the real estate to those heirs. Now, if someone dies and they have a will outlined in their estate, then the executor will take hold of the estate. And there are basically two options there as well. The will may direct the executor to sell the property, in which case the executor can sign all documents and sell the property regardless of any other heirs, or it may allow the executor to sell the estate, in which case it's hit or miss as to whether they can sell the estate without the approval of the heirs. Many states will not, uh, many title companies in, in many states will not certify a sale uh, solely from an executor if the executor does not have direct authority to sell the estate. It can be a tricky, it can be a tricky uh, situation if you're in, if the will did not direct the executor to sell the estate, but simply allow the executor to sell the estate. So that is something that you definitely want to address in your will ahead of time. Now, this is a question I see a lot, and it's do all the heirs have to agree to sell the property? And the short answer is no, right? But that's not an easy answer. The real answer is that all heirs, all owners of property must sign all contracts and deeds. If two people, a married couple, own a house, both people must, both owners must sign all documents. If three or four people own a house, all owners must sign the documents. When someone dies without the will, the heirs become the owners, whether it's two, five, 10, or 20. I recently had a deal in North Carolina that is still in process, but there are upwards of 30 heirs going back to 1969, some of whom are deceased themselves. Okay, so those that are deceased we have to account for and those that are still alive have to sign off on any sale. Okay, now what happens when 15 heirs want to keep the property and the 16th heir says, no, I want my money. They can file a suit to have the estate sold. 
and it, I think it's called a separation order, and the court will order that the uh, estate be subdivided and sold and parceled out to the you know, remaining heirs. So in that case, all the heirs do not have to be on board, but it can only be done after a court proceeding, assuming that all the heirs do not want to sell at the same time. Can you live in a home during the probate process? And the simple answer is there are no laws anywhere prohibiting someone from occupying a home that is part of a probate estate. This happens quite often, actually. Maybe the owner of a home has died, but they had people living with them. They were not owners or tenants, just roommates per se. Those roommates or other cohabitants are allowed to stay in the property until the probate process is completed. If they were co-owners, then the property would have automatically uh, fallen, you know, would have fallen to their ownership and avoided probate. But in this case, uh, you know, we're talking about a property that is in probate because there were no um, joint owners or beneficiaries listed. So in that case, they can stay in the property until the probate process is over. It is also not uncommon because probate can take a very long time that an executor of an estate may intentionally put renters or other family members in the home just to keep it up. There's always a family member somewhere that needs a house, right? So if you have a probate house that's empty and it might be empty for the six, eight, 10, 12 months it takes to settle the estate, it might be very beneficial to have someone in the property mowing the lawn and keeping it up so you don't have squatters and you don't have problems with the city. What if a house going through the probate process, the owner has died, has tenants, has legally leased tenants in it? Well, nothing really. Those tenants are entitled to live in the property through the period of their lease. And then when the lease expires, it depends upon state law as to how to handle the expired lease, but the estate can then decide to renew the lease or terminate the lease and have the tenants vacate the property at that point in time. But the lease is in effect, the lease is with the, between the tenant and the owner of the property. And that doesn't matter if the ownership changes. You can sell the property or the owner can die and new owners take over. Doesn't matter, the lease is between the tenant and the owner and that lease stands. 